Hello there, fellow cosmonauts. Welcome to Nova Star International, uh, breaking new ground, setting forth to the stars. That's right. So we are here in Kerbal Space Program, and we are going to be doing uh, a playthrough of the Kerbal Space Program career mode with an absolute ton of mods installed. We're going to make it a little bit more difficult for ourselves and uh, add some interesting challenges, some new space parts uh, as well, rocket parts, and uh, add a bunch of cool stuff to the base game through the use of mods. Now, just a little disclaimer here. You might be thinking, hang on a minute, if this is the career mode, why are all your buildings upgraded to level 3 already? Well, that is a small bug with the 64-bit version of Kerbal Space Program, and uh, that is causing all of the buildings to appear that they are upgraded to level 3 already. Now, I can guarantee that these are not level 3, these are actually level 1, and uh, it is just a little bug that is with this version of uh, KSP. However, when it does come to upgrading the buildings, I will do it manually, and uh, it will be all good. Fingers crossed. Now, 64-bit cable can be a little bit unstable, but here's hoping to a successful game. So anyway, um, let's just get started, shall we? Let's uh, set forth. Uh, let's go over to our uh, little contracts area and grab ourselves a couple of contracts. Um, as you can see, well, there's not really a lot here, but we will definitely launch a new vessel. And we will definitely set an altitude record of 5,000 meters. These are only trivial, but they are definitely necessary in order to get our space program off the ground. Haha, <laughs> quite literally. Alright, so uh, let's start off then by quickly sticking a command pod down right here. And we're going to be trying to scoop up as much science as we possibly can along the way. And we'll be doing a few little uh, nifty tri uh, tips and tricks to get ourselves a little boost in science so that we can unlock some awesome stuff on the tech tree. So this will be our first little rocket. Pretty simple. Just a command pod, a parachute, a small fuel tank, and and a liquid fuel engine. There's not really many parts available in here by default, but you may notice we've actually got some cool science cameras, and these are part of a mod that adds uh, a bunch of cameras to your vessel so you can look through through the cameras as you uh, are launching. It just offers a different perspective on the whole thing, which is really awesome. And in fact, speaking of mods, I will insert uh, I will put a full list of mods below the video. So anyway, let's uh, name our craft and we'll call it the Nova Star 1 because guess what? This is the first craft and you may have noticed actually we have got a Nova Star flag. Let's just zoom in on that a minute. Oh, hang on. What is this? I see some googly eyes. Hell yeah, look at that. Nova Star with the googly eyes. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that, that'll do for our first vessel. Let's just launch it and uh, get these first contracts signed off. No point wasting any time at all. Now, before we do launch, um, we've got the life support stuff up here. We'll minimize that for now. It's not going to come into play for a little while. But yes, before we actually launch ourselves off, let's grab ourselves some science. Let's do a crew report. That's fair enough. Crew report from the launch pad. You find a kettle in the supplies container and start to beg Mission Control the permission to stop what you're doing and have a cup of tea. That sounds like a very British thing to do, actually, and uh, I'm totally, totally for that. Let's uh, grab ourselves an EVA report as well. Believe it or not, we are actually flying over Kerbin's shores right now. Um, yes, we're not exactly very high up, but we'll get some science for that, and that's all good. We'll also take the data from the capsule and reboard so we can do another crew report once we lift off. So that's just a little bit of science before we've even left the ground. Not a bad start, but let's stick on SAS right here. We'll power up and remember we're trying to reach a target altitude of 5,000 meters. We have liftoff and I think we're going to be able to do 5,000 meters quite easily with this tank and it's not the most, uh, not the most uh, large tank in the world, but it should do the trick. Launching up, we're at 3,500, and yeah, we should be able to make it. Let's do another crew report while we're here, though, and we look out the window, see a piece of your rocket fly off. Oh, it wasn't important anyways. Well, that's a good job, because uh, I'd be pretty scared if I uh, was looking out of my little cockpit window and I saw pieces of my rocket falling off to the ground around me. That would not be cool. So anyway, we've reached 5,900 meters and we are returning back to the ground. Let's stick 
our parachute on and hope that we can land this thing without exploding. Uh, that would be very ideal. We are playing the career mode, remember, so uh, any of the salvaged parts that we can, can get back will be returned to our funds, and funds are going to be fairly limited uh, at the start of the game. Now, I would love to do an EVA right now, but we can't, unfortunately. Um, we actually have to upgrade our astronaut complex if we want to do EVAs whilst off the ground, which is not great, but we actually haven't done an EVA report whilst on the ground yet, so once we land, we will uh, go and uh, hop out and uh, take an EVA report from the launch pad itself. Let's just turn off SAS right here as we come down. Uh, parachute deploying at 500 meters and we will speed things up to the ground. Now, it's worth noting actually that all of the Kerbal Space Program, uh, all the Kerbal Space Center facilities even, all actually have uh, different... Uh, oh man! That was not supposed to happen. We lost an engine. What a shame. Uh, they actually all have uh, different uh, biomes, which means that uh, you can get science from the ground at all of the different facilities. So, not a great start. We did lose an engine. Uh-oh, that's not so good, but it's not the end of the world. We didn't lose our crew capsule, and Mr. Jebediah Kerman right here is going to be absolutely fine. Let's let go and watch him as he falls to the ground, and we can do ourselves an EVA report now from the surface of uh, the launch pad, uh, which means, <laughs> well, I don't think it was uh, necessary to go here with the spacesuit. Yes, you are completely right, Mr. Jeb. We'll get him back inside that capsule and recover the vessel for a grand total of... Uh, Let's see, 23 science, not bad overall there, 18 science earned from that little mission. That's pretty decent, to be honest with you, for doing not a whole lot. We got some funds back from landing at the launch pad, but we lost our engine, which kind of sucks. We could have got a little bit more funds from our recovered parts there. Jebediah gained a ex oh, an experience point, which is great, and our total reputation is now 22, paving the way for better upgrades and better contracts. So let's hop over to our research and development uh, center here and uh, buy ourselves some basic rocketry. To think we didn't even have basic rocketry and we still managed to achieve a lofty height of 5,000 meters. Certainly not too bad. Now, we have got 18 science remaining and we could actually upgrade another po uh, another section here another branch the general rocketry is 20 so that's out of reach the stability is 18 we could get that but these parts aren't exactly too useful to us at the moment or we could get survivability and judging by the fact that we just lost our engine there landing down we can upgrade or unlock even these uh, radial mount parachutes so that we can actually uh, Stop our engines from exploding on touchdown. So let's research that and we also get a bunch of uh, oxygen containers and things like that from the TAC life support. They're not going to be too important yet, but we're certainly going to want to use those later on to keep our Kerbals uh, fed, watered and oxygenized when they're up in space and away from home for a long time. Uh, it's certainly going to be interesting when it comes to making space centers to keep providing them with plenty of resources so they don't die and perish out in space. So let's go back to our mission control center, see what else we can do right here. Now, performing visual surveys of Kerbin, it's not too bad to do these, but we can't really do them very easily, I don't think, until we can get ourselves a space plane. We're quite away from that at the moment. So let's skip those for now. We can set an altitude record of 11,000 meters. I have no doubts about that, so we'll do that one. And we've also got some more here as well. Um, test a stack decoupler on a suborbital trajectory. We can't do that. Not yet, anyway. We certainly can't reach that altitude. Test the Mark 16 parachute. Again, maybe a little bit high to test that one as we're only aiming for 11,000 meters on the next flight, remember. And test the solid fuel booster. And uh, we want to launch that through the staging sequence, so we're not going to be able to do that just yet either. But we can go ahead and set ourselves a new altitude record. Let's go back into our vehicle assembly building and uh, scrap this. So, I mean, liquid fuel is all well and good, but why go up with a liquid fueled engine if you can blast your way up on solid fuel? Hell yeah. We'll also, for the uh, safety 
precautions, add a couple of uh, radial mount parachutes to the side of our capsule so that we don't uh, end up crashing and burning when we land. Let's uh, add, uh, oh, well, upgrade our vessel name, Nova Star 2. How original. And we'll launch ourselves off. We've got about double the Delta V here, according to the Kerbal engineer, which uh, unfortunately won't be accessible once we launch, as we don't have the Kerbal engineer chip put onto the vessel. But uh, we should be all good to go, I think. Um, 11,000 meters, perhaps that's just enough to reach the upper atmosphere. I'm not actually entirely sure where the upper atmosphere starts and the lower atmosphere ends, but we're blasting off and uh, we're going to be going pretty quick. 200 meters per second and there's plenty of solid fuel in this bad boy. We are going to continue going up and I'm a little bit concerned actually that we might go maybe a little too high. We are just under 4,000 meters and we're going to start tilting to the right here because uh, if we land back at the launch pad we're actually going to find that we've not uh, we're not entering a new biome if we launch uh, land back at the launch pad so I'm tilting to the right in the hope that hey we can go and uh, head over the water here. Let's do a crew report. Nothing new at the moment and we've broken the 11,000 meter mark as we are about to start descending. That's really not too bad. 13,000 meters is uh, pretty high. Still no new science to gain but once we splash down in the water we'll be able to do some science from there and we'll be able to do a crew report from the water we'll be able to do an EVA on the water as well so I want to be very careful when we land here that we land with the crew hatch facing upwards we should be fine let's turn SAS off then and float serenely back to the ground having a quick look at our contracts as we float down we set that altitude record gained a little bit of money and some reputation but unfortunately no science for that one. The nice thing about the career mode of course is that you do get science for some of these things as well so just a little of a, a little bit of an extra way to get some more science but hey let's uh, speed things up slightly here as we come down. Our parachute's not going to open until 500 meters anyway and then and then we'll take ourselves out of the time warp so that no dodgy physics happens. Let's uh, come down a little bit faster. There we go. And our parachute's about to deploy. There they go. Slowing us down to 4.4 meters per second. That's really not uh, not too fast, which is a good thing. We don't want to be crashing down and exploding like last time. So let's do the time warp again and bring ourselves back down to the water. Of course, we're over sea level. This is the altitude above sea level. So we've got a long way to go. And 4.3 meters per second is not, uh, as I say, the fastest speed. So we might be here a little while as we... Uh, prepared to splash down. Let's do a quick crew report here, see if we get anything. Yes, we do, because we are technically flying over the water. Does our craft float? Maybe we'll get to test it. We will indeed, actually. We are about to about to splash down. And, uh, well, I have a sneaking suspicion that we might just about float. Let's uh, see, shall we? 15 meters to go, and touchdown. Look at that, just dipping into the water. Are we going to tip? Yes, we are. Oh. Well, that was quite a vigorous landing. Anyway, we can rotate our vessel now so that our crew hatch is facing upwards. Let's do another crew report. Uh, oh, wait. We can't do another crew report. We have to get out first. So let's EVA. And uh, Jebediah floating pretty precariously on the water there. He probably weighs more than the vessel at this stage. We'll do an EVA report out here. And uh, quick, get back in. Quick. Uh, as we're flying over Kerbin's water. This is an interesting little bug because we're not in the water. We're technically flying over it, even though we are furthest thing from flying I can imagine. We'll keep that and we'll grab the data from the command pod and we'll get back in. A little dance we've got to do here. We'll do another crew report and this time we can do the crew report from the water not above the water. We'll keep that and then we'll get back out again because we want to get ourselves let's climb onto here Wait, look at me! <laughs> it's like a big surfboard. Uh, we want to go off the side and actually do an EVA report from in the water itself. To cal You calculate the number of snacks you should bring to be able to swim to KSP. Well, it's really not that far away, so I imagine uh, no snacks required. Or in the case of Kerbals, a hundred snacks required because uh, Kerbals always, always require snacks. So there's the KSP over there. It's not far away at all. So let's go back into this. Can we get on there? Come on, jump up. You can do it. Oh no. Let's try and uh, 
Let's try and position ourselves at the front. Let's give us the best chance of getting back on here. Oh, go on. Ah, no. Let's try the jetpack on, see if that's going to help us. <laughs> I have a feeling it won't. No, we can't do that. Oh, well, we'll have to recover the vessel separately. I would have liked to have get, gotten back into the capsule. Uh, we recovered Jeb, and that's a total of four science gained. And I just realized we used Jebediah again. Not a good idea, because he doesn't actually gain any experience from that, as the other Kerbals would have. We'll hop into our tracking station then. And uh, we'll go and recover the Nova Star 2 now. And we'll get a little bit of extra science from this. Oh yes, look at that. Another 11.2, which means that we get... Uh, a total of uh, 18 science now, which is really not bad. Recovering some um, parts, of course, and that's that. So, let's head back over to the overview of the Kerbal Space Center and hop into our R&D lab once more. Now, 18 science is enough for us to unlock stability. But I can't help but think that that's not going to be, again, too useful to us for now. So, what I'm thinking we should do instead is uh, perhaps buy ourselves general rocketry once we get a little bit more science. So let's just go over to the R&D, on the R&D, sorry, the mission control. And lo and behold, we have a bunch more contracts, which is good. Uh, this one should be nice and easy. Having a quick look at this, test the LVT-45 landed at Kerbin. Well, that's going to be easy because all we have to do is put that as our engine and launch and we will have done that one. So we'll accept that one. And uh, let's see what else we've got here. Test the Rocomax solid fuel booster. It's kind of difficult to test these because we have to get ourselves up to altitude first before launching them. So perhaps not that one, but set an altitude record of 22,000 meters. I think we should go for that. I think that's certainly achievable. And with that, we should get ourselves plenty of additional science to unlock more bigger and better rocket parts. So let's quickly build this vessel, and I think we'll have to save launching this one until the next episode. But uh, as you can see, we've got our T-45 liquid engine. Experimental, be warned, likely to explode. Um, no, we should be fine. We just need to stick ourselves on a pretty decently sized fuel tank. One, two... And we'll stick ourselves the LV-45 on there. Pretty simple design so far, of course. And you may notice, yeah, these uh, rocket uh, fuel tanks here, they're not actually in the base game. Nope, this is KW Rocketry, one of the other mods that we have installed. Pretty awesome mod, actually. And uh, we'll actually get to see the use of the fairings later on when it comes to building probes and all of that jazz. So uh, that's going to be the Nova Star 3. I don't know if that's going to actually reach 22,000 meters, but if you want to find out, I guess you have to stay tuned for the next episode of Nova Star International. And uh, for now, I've been Zach. Thank you very much for watching Zero Gravity Gaming, and I'll see you guys next time.